to all of you. Um, if we can go ahead and um, start the recording of the meeting, hopefully that first 10 minutes was not recorded. Um, um, We're live now. Okay, wonderful. So welcome to all of you. And again, my apologies for the meeting starting late and for the technical difficulties that we had. Um, and then also, um, typically we have our board chairperson um, and also um, Lisa Estep to either opening, open or close our meetings for us. And um, unfortunately, um, Ms. Adams is not able to be with us today. Um, she is at the county commissioner's meeting representing the school district, um, but she does definitely send her greetings. And it may be that Ms. Estep is able to join um, our meeting a little bit later um, today. Um, so I'd like to open the meeting with some thank yous. Um, first to Ms. Estep for her tireless service um, to this committee and to the district. This technically will be her last EDI committee um, meeting um, as a member of the New Hanover County Schools um, Board. Um, and so I just really wanted to share my appreciation and gratitude for her work and her leadership um, in, um, in this work. So thank you to, to, to Ms. Estep. Um, my second thank you um, to Franchon um, and her incredible facilitation of our last meet and greet. Um, for anyone who was able to be a part of it, it was just a ton a fun, great opportunity to get to know each other, whether you were face-to-face -face or you were remote. Um, really just um, appreciated it. Um, and Franchon, I have to say, it just made a run on all the lavender and eucalyptus that I could. Um, and um, have just really been enjoying that. Um, and I'm just so very grateful and appreciative um, of you and, and your commitment. To, um, so even though you weren't even in the state with us, um, you um, made the experience just very inviting, very welcoming, and very enriching. enriching. So thank you to you um, for that. Um, and then also wanted to say thank you to Jennifer Turner. Um, just to let you know, she represented EDI extremely well at our last board meeting. Um, we, she, <clears throat> volunteered to do an update to the board and did an exceptional job in communicating just all the work that has been done and all that the committee has achieved in, the, in its short um, life as a committee and um, just exceptional presentation. And then an extra kudos to her because our meeting that night did not end until sometime after 10 o'clock. And I think she was almost next to last on the agenda. So huge shout out to, to her and a thank you to all of you for um, what you've done to support EDI and just to make it um, so very meaningful um, and so very impactful. So, so thank you tremendously for that. Um, and with that, and I don't know if anyone else um, had any um, acknowledgements or thank yous before we open the, the meeting fully for the agenda. Just wanna give some time and space for that. Dr. Smith. Yes. I don't have an announcement or anything. I just wanted to show everyone something I thought this group may appreciate. I went to Biddy and Bo's today, if you guys are familiar with the local coffee shop and they have these t-shirts I thought people would appreciate. It says, radically inclusive. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. Shop. Yes. Sure. <laughs> that would be great if that was a hashtag. Yes. 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 And you know, and, and also I know, I don't know if all of you know, but our district has regular um, Twitter chats. And I think having the EDI committee sponsor tw Twitter chat may be something that we would want to do in the future. I know that Casey um, did one um, and it was a huge success, um, but I don't know if there might be something that the entire committee might want to, to land around. And what a great um, hashtag um, if we did do something like that. And Casey just put in the chat box, she's ready for round two. So I think that is either an invitation or a challenge. Just take it however you might want to. 
Um, so with that, um, we'll transition to the next item on the agenda, which are to the introduction of our new members. And I'm so excited. We have five brand new members. They come from various um, experiences in life. Um, and I think really complement our group um, as a whole. So what I'll do is call their names and if, I'd love to give you guys some time and space to tell your story and what brings you to um, our um, committee. And then um, after that, then we will um, ask our um, committee task force chairs to talk a little bit about their work um, and extend an invitation to you to join one of those task forces. So we'll begin um, with Mr. Thaddeus Adams. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I've been with the school system now a little over 13 years. Um, started out in technology and I'm currently the custodial administrator um, in the maintenance operations department. So um, I deal with all the custodians, all the principals, all the every, everyone <laughs> in the school system for the most part. A um, little bit of background, um, <sighs> been in the military, been, uh, lived a few places, um, born and raised in New York. I've been in Wilmington area now about uh, 20 years, so felt that I wanted to be on this committee to make a difference um, and see what we can do as long as I'm in the, with the school system to, for improvement. Thank you for that, I appreciate it. All right, up next we have uh, Kamika Sidberry. Hello everyone, um, my name is Kamika Sidberry and I am a former employee of the New Hanover County School System. However, I work with the Partnership School, D.C. Virgo Preparatory Academy Lab School. I started, I fell into education, but before that, um, I'm actually a native Wilmotonian. I was educated in New Hanover County Schools. My kids went to New Hanover County Schools, and I work in New Hanover County Schools. And so, I started as a TA because I actually fell into education. I needed to have a job to feed my children. So I worked at Murray Middle School as I went to school at UNCW to get my teaching certification. Um, and so that is my commitment is to find community members just like myself to fall into the field of education because there are a lot of us out there. Um, I have been in education, so my fall became my grace, I like to say. It allowed me to not only feed my children, but it allowed me to save my children and myself. And so becoming an educator is not only something that I am committed to for myself, but for my community. Um, I believe in the essence of community partnerships, but also being and understanding the community in which you work and live and being a part of that community. Um, I am dedicated to the sustainability and the progress of the Wilmington community. I love Wilmington. I love it. I love it with a passion. My family is here. You know, my cousins' cousins are here. Um, but I just look forward to working with you all. And I look forward to the progress that we can make on this committee. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, up next, we have uh, Maddie Lewis. And I am not sure if Matt is on the call. Um, I'll share just a little bit um, about Maddie. And in full disclosure, um, I definitely know Mr. Adams. Um, I know Ms. Sid very well. Actually, I'm the person that hired her at Murray Middle School. And then Maddie Lewis was actually a former student of mine at Murray Middle School. Um, but she also is featured in the Maddie Speaks um, podcast that um, has been produced by Kitbeer um, Collective. Um, and so she comes to us as a community member, a parent, um, someone who also has experienced the school system um, and just a variety of um, experiences. And I don't wanna tell her story for her. So when we do meet again in January, I, I, I will definitely give her the time and space um, 
to tell her story, but I did want you to know just a little bit about her um, because I do believe she's such an important addition to um, this this um, committee. And I'll tell you, you know, maybe I'm a, a little bit of that mama bear in me. It just makes my heart proud to know that I've got a former student who who um, is is a part of this as as well. Um, so yes, so um, looking forward to her being um, with us. Yes. And yes, Tyler, thank you for that. My, Maddie does have an incredible story. It's an amazing asset to our, our committee. I agree completely, Tyler. And then up next, we have Kirsten Keynes, and um, I'll let her tell her story. Hi, everyone. My name is Kirsten, and I've been living in North Carolina for 20 years, but I moved to Wilmington in August. Yeah, so Kamika, I was really excited to hear what you said because we're loving Wilmington too. So um, I thank you for including me in this committee. I'm really excited to work with you. I'm a professor at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and a fellow at the Frank Porter Graham Child Development Institute. Some of you might work with those organizations. And I have been a school board member in Durham, North Carolina and continue to work with school boards and school districts across the nation. So I'm excited to be with you and learn from you and work with you. Thanks for including me. Well, we appreciate you being here. And also you are on the agenda a little bit later for a presentation. I'm really excited to have you share with the committee in regards to that. All right. And then last but not least, we have uh, Sina. Um, um, thank you so much i really appreciate it um hey everybody i'm cena you can just call me cena it's easier um, I have been in Wilmington since 96. I came here to go to UNCW for health and exercise science. So I've, I'm not in the um, education field, um, but over the years I've worked in some nonprofit work. Um, I was on the board at a safe place, which is an anti-human trafficking organization locally. I did that for about six years. And then I've been on a racial unity committee at my church at Wrightsville Methodist Church um, for several years and we do a lot of work within the community. Um, I got interested in this when my kids went to school. I live in um, the Ogden district and um, so I have two boys and one is adopted and is African-American and when we started looking at schools we recognized that it was very um, segregated and we didn't like that and so um, he was at Ogden for a while and um, then they redistricted and we thought it would be better and it really wasn't so we've got him at a different totally different school now but um, basically I'm just a concerned citizen I just think we need diversity in our schools and obviously um, equity and inclusion as well and it's just something that I'm passionate about and I'm just really excited to be here and see what you guys do and how I can hopefully help. So thank you for including me. Well, and thank you for um, being a part of that. Um, you know, filling out the application and being willing to be a part of that committee. So we are so appreciative to have all of you um, be here. Um, we had quite a few um, folks to apply, but what I can say to you is unanimously you were chosen um, and we're just so very very grateful to have you be a part of this work and just excited to have you be here. Um, what I'd like to do is to give some time and space for our um, committee members to um, talk a little bit um, about their work, their um, work groups that they're in, their task forces, um, so that you understand a little bit of that. Um, and then also for them to tell you a little bit about their story um, so that you um, get to know them just, just a little. 
um, it's it's harder, you know, when we're not able to, to be in the same space. Um, but I think if we can be intentional um, in our conversations and our structured activities to, to make sure that we're getting to know each other, um, I think it can be done very successfully in, in, in a virtual space. So we have two primary, um, well, we have started initially with two primary groups, one working on academics and then the other one focusing on culture. Um, now our academic group is working on um, putting together presentations for the board. Um, and then our cultural um, work group task force um, it has goals that they've um, identified as well. So what do is those leads will kind of take the lead, talk about their work a little bit. And then members of each of those groups, you could just tell a little bit about yourself. And I'll begin just simply because I, I find myself most often in the role of facilitator, um, really ready to give that up. I'm so much better um, an observer and a learner and a student in this work, um, but I will serve whatever role and purpose um, that's needed. Um, my position in the district is um, as deputy superintendent, and I'm also the lead academic officer. But I come to this work um, having been a principal, having been a special education teacher, um, married to an African-American man um, with two African-American sons. Um, as a family, we've experienced racial profiling um, and um, a lot of different challenges. Um, and then as a principal, I've experienced just a lot of heartbreak and seeing students that um, I've invested in and um, they've been you know, invested just in their education and there's just so much um, just potential and possibility um, to see them with their lives ending either in incarceration or um, in death um, because they saw no other hope and opportunity opportunity in a community that many of us love um, and have such great pride in, but um, is such where we just really see so many disparate um, opportunities um, for, for different groups. So my, I think my main motivation probably comes um, from that as a mother, um, but um, you know, my commitment is and seeing that the needs of all of our learners, um, regardless of their race or their background, their ethnicity, um, their level of disability or not, or how they identify, just really thrive um, in, in this educational space and ultimately in our community. So now I'll open it up to our leads, either academic or um, cultural, for you guys to talk a little bit about your work and a little bit about yourselves. We're usually not this shy. Are we all doing individual or just um, cat, cat like committee like leaders or just everybody? So I was asking for the committee leaders to begin and then okay. um, for everyone else to have a voice in that who wants to share when your committee speaks, yes. And I apologize for not being clear. Okay. Hey, Rachel, do you and I want to tag team this? All right. So um, I'm Al O'Brien. It's good to see everybody. Welcome to all of our new members. Um, Work, um, I've, I've worked basically with, with both different um, committees, I think, during the course of this, but have really landed more on the academic side. And um, we are looking into um, equity issues uh, involving everything from how kids are assigned to, to pre-K all the way through um, what access our high school students have um, to signature programs, to um, AP courses, honors courses, um, career and college promise courses, all of those things and everything in between, uh, including AIG services. And so um, we, we've um, tackled a lot of those, those topics and, and are, are really trying to look at, at um, opportunity gaps that are 
um, present and exist uh, within our within our district, as well as many others we, we feel as well. Um, so uh, Rachel, I'll turn it over to you to see whatever I may have uh, missed on. I think you captured the big pieces. Um, but I'm, my name is Rachel Gray. I'm the principal at Coddington um, Elementary School, and I have been at several other schools in our county in the role of administrator, and um, I taught ESL prior to that, and I taught um, regular education, um, elementary and middle school as well. I'm a foster mama turned legal guardian, and um, really entered this work uh, due to interest in seeing integrated schools, um, similar to what um, Sina was sharing. And I'm on the equity work group in addition to this um, board committee. And we have a diverse um, student demographic task force uh, meeting every other Friday. And we are learning about um, application processes and enrollment in schools that aren't simply um, mapped out from their district. So how do people get into Coddington and Eaton and um, Freeman and Snipes if they are applying and Gregory and then also um, the school the specialty programs in the high schools, and then we've learned about pre-K entrance. So we're looking at making some um, recommendations um, as far as things to consider to hopefully diversify um, the enrollment at those places. We also have book studies, if you're interested in joining. Um, those are starting again, I believe, January or February, Dr. Smith, Oh, I can't remember. It might even be March, but we're reading, reading um, White Fragility and um, How to Be an Anti-Racist. So you can hop in on uh, new chapters if you are interested. And I will share with you the Google Drive so you can see all of our files. So look for a share from me um, for access to Google Drive files and uh, glad you're here. So just a clarifying question, Rachel, are the book studies for both the work group and the EDI committee or just the work group? I think all are welcome. Okay. But maybe it's not like that, but I thought it was. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so if I'm in that um, group, I'll introduce myself. Um, my name is Jennifer Turner, and I'm um, not in the education profession, per se, with the school system. Um, I work at the hospital at New Hanover Regional Medical Center, and I do um, continuing professional development for healthcare providers. And um, kind of in that role, um, I call it my extracurricular activity because it's not part of my job responsibility, but um, I get to work with um, health equity and sexual orientation and gender identity education planning for healthcare providers. Um, so that's a really interesting part of my job that I love to do. And um, just from a personal note, um, my family is biracial, bicultural, bilingual. Um, my children are Hispanic and white. Um, so we have a lot of family in different countries, family here. Um, we try to speak English and Spanish at home so they can learn. Um, have seven-year-old twins that are in second grade. So um, perfect age for them to be learning their second language. Um, and that's a little bit about me. I'm not a Wilmington native, but I've lived here for 30 years. So um, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I can go next. Um, I'm also on the academics committee. My name is Sean Lamb. Um, and I also am a community member. I work for GE as an engineering manager. Um, and a lot of my early work in equity was on STEM equity and uh, in women and other underrepresented categories. Um, 
and I, I kicked off and, and founded the Girls in Technology Summit, trying to get the pipeline built early uh, in junior high um, for, for girls to go into math and science. And then I've kept that up over the years with Science Olympiad and Engineering Academies uh, and various other coaching. Um, my later, later work in equity, my son uh, is almost nine and he has Down syndrome. And I have two other little girls, one of whom is also in New Hanover County Schools. So um, my later work, my more recent work has been uh, as an advocate for children with disabilities. There's a, a lot of segregation that tends to go on um, just due to their unique needs, especially in academics. Uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of my son's voice until, uh, until he's a little bit older for now. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Andy Webb. I'm an instructional coach in New Hanover County Schools. I am from Fayetteville, North Carolina, but I graduated from UNCW. And I really got focused on work in equity first as an educator. And then when I worked in uh, the House of Representatives in DC for a year on a fellowship and the Education Labor Committee is extremely focused on equity and education. And that really was a catalyst for me. So I'm very glad to be a part of this group and welcome to all the new members. Thank you, Andy. Um, Dr. Smith, I'll go ahead and go. Okay. Uh, my name is Tyler Shoemate. I'm a fifth grade teacher in New Hanover County Schools. Um, I've been teaching, this is the start of my 10th year. Um, so I spent two and a half years teaching overseas um, in Hong Kong and Seoul, Korea. And um, I have taught at Title I schools for six years in North Carolina, um, in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, my, which is near my hometown and UNCW alumni. Um, and I came to equity work um, when I uh, became, when I started working in New Hanover County Schools a few years ago, um, really noticed a lot of um, just diversity issues, diversity with staff issues. Um, for example, my school is about 50-50, 50% majority, 50% minority, and we have no African-American classroom teachers, no teachers of color in the classroom. Um, so to me, that's an issue because I think children identify with success that looks like them. So, um, that is one of my biggest passions is trying to work on how do we recruit and retain, um, teachers of color. Um, just so our kids have, um, that cultural and relational, um, piece as well. Um, and I love the work the group's doing. I've been on the committee since for a little over a year now, I guess, um, and I am also a member of the Equity Work Group, um, which is comprised of New Hanover County Schools employees, um, and very grateful for the work that Dr. Smith does and everyone else does. Um, I think we make a, all a dynamic group. Um, so yeah, a little bit about me. All right, thank you, Tyler. So if we could get the lead. I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm Karen Beatty. Um, I actually retired from New Hanover County Schools. Um, I was a licensed school social worker. And um, I guess you could say I've been in equity work even in my career. It's kind of ingrained in me. But since I've retired, I've been doing work with um, various organizations. I've done some work with UNCW around um, the um, disadvantaged um, youth and suspensions and stuff like that. So just trying to make sure that um, equity is not rolled off the table. Um, I became interested in this work um, with the group because I just like Tyler and everyone else probably here that knows that we do have a shortage of teachers of color in our system. And so recruiting and retaining those teachers are very, very important. And equity for all students is very, very important. And I'm also uh, working some with the NAACP Parents Council who also have the same concern about the equity um, and diversity inclusion in schools. So we're, you know, we're having these conversations everywhere. I'm a native of Wilmington and my daughter's attended school here. And now my twin grandsons who are six years old in first grade 
uh, in this county. They came from Mecklenburg County and Mecklenburg County looks a whole lot different than New Hanover County. So when they got into their classrooms, they looked around and they really didn't see anybody that looked like them. And they really didn't see teachers that looked like them. So this work is very, very important um, to me as well. And welcome to all the new members and I look forward to seeing where we can go from here. Thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. Um, if we could get um, our lead from our cultural work group, um, if you guys um, don't mind talking about the work and then um, talking a little bit about yourselves. Um, I believe I'm the co-lead for that committee, but I didn't mention that. I probably should have along with Lena, I believe. Um, so I apologize, but yes, uh, a little bit about, I'll let Lena do most of the talking, but we just kind of work with uh, what does day-to-day -day life look like for our students? How do we make the classroom more inclusive for our students? Um, that works, you know, we focus on teacher recruitment, curriculum, um, dis, you know, looking at um, the other side of discipline, what does discipline look like in the classroom? Um, so that's just a little bit about us, but Ms. Espinoza, it's all, all to you now. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. I was waiting for you to do the big talk, Tyler. You're so good at it. <laughs> so uh, my name is Lina Spinoza. I work at the county at the International School of Gregory as an instructional coach and a Spanish coordinator for the dual language program. I've been here in the equity committee from the beginning. So I'm very excited to be part of this project. And I just needless to say, I want to represent not only women, but also the Hispanic, the Latino community and helping more. Um, I think my biggest uh, motivation was to get to see what's going on in the county, to see different ways that I can support uh, the communication part, because I know being inside, I know there is a lot of great programs, a lot of possibilities for people, but the, uh, the access is there, but the ways to get there is, is kind of blurry. People don't know how to get to the resources or especially our um, Latino families because most of them don't speak the language. And even when they speak the language, there are some other cultural barriers that prevent them from coming and to, to see how friendly the county is and all the resources that we have to offer. So there's, I'm still trying to figure out what is it that we need to do to keep working and, and closing up those gaps in communication. So uh, this is kind of the, the reason for me to start working um, on this committee. Um, I love being part of the uh, cultural and community committee in this part. Uh, it's the one that is very dear to me. I've been around dual language education for so long. So I know how diversity looks like or should look like. I'm, I'm part of that and that comes with me. So I don't, I don't see like life without it, but then different things are, are come to me like that are not very common to the rest of people. So I, I am very surprised when I see, I've, I've always been in, in a place where I see people from different colors in all the environment where I am. And then I get to learn to share that. My family has always been like open to, to different ways of doing things and trying new things. And I think that comes from me being from another place. So for starters, that was my model to, to come to the US. So I've been trying to, to see that and, and then trying to be like the voice to speak up and say, okay, why is not evident for everybody that it's so easy to have different perspectives and listen to different people doing stuff. So. That's my reason to be in the community. And as I Tyler says in this uh, committee, we focus on different levels of uh, community engagement. We have uh, different ideas and we are working around different things and uh, setting up, we're getting better at setting up short-term goals and be more effective with those. So we are working on getting um, like, and Casey can help me with this because she is the, the mastermind behind all these ideas of students' participation at different levels, school level, committee levels, and, and, and in, within the community. So we wanna give all these ways of communication and participation 
for the students and for all different uh, genders and identities so they can feel represented at different levels. That in addition with the retention with the uh, teachers of different backgrounds, retention and, and inclusion. We want to have more of those. So we have been working with human resources. We have had people here to talk about that. So we are trying to 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 get our, our feet wet on different areas to see where is it that we can make the biggest impact. So I think that's where we are at right now. And we always welcome new people and great ideas. So we want, please join us and see how much fun we have in this committee. In this subcommittee. Thank you, Lena. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, anyone else from the um, cultural um, and community um, committee or, or work group? Well, I'm on that one. I'm trying to think. Anybody else? I think Franchon also. Um, so I'm Casey. Um, it's good to see new members and learn about you guys. Um, I guess I kind of think back just listening to others and reflecting. I think that a lot of my interest in this kind of work began when I took an interest in bullying that was happening in a middle school and just kind of like really thinking from the student's perspective. Um, and when I think back about my own student experience and I think about my own progress in life in general, um, I was like 18 or 19 years old before I recognized like who I was as an individual in terms of my sexual orientation. And now as an adult, I can look back and recognize that my development was stunted because I didn't have in my you know, educational world affirmations of who I was. So that's kind of where I enter the space in terms of that's, that's the diversity I represent, I guess. Um, even though I don't really even like the, the label of, of lesbian or gay, um, and that's a whole other story. But um, I think in the past couple of years, I've had a lot of time and in, in studying and a program here at, at Watson College to dive way deeper into all these different aspects of, of our identities and you know my own to better understand how power has operated around me. And it's either privileged me or you know oppressed certain parts of who I am. So I'm really interested in those aspects of, of the equity work and digging into that and helping other adults really uh, better dig into that and see how it impacts, you know, their work with students. And Lena referenced the, the youth piece and the student piece. That's a huge passion for me um, because one of the isms that we don't talk a lot about is ageism and it is a thing. And, you know, we all carry a lot of power as adults in school systems. So I'm really, I'm really passionate about flipping that script and, you know, really privileging the voice of students. And I, that's one of the, one of the layers that we're trying to get at in the culture and climate committee. Um, most of you, I have, um, some of you, or if not all of you were at the um, thing that I facilitated. Um, but my name is Franchon Francis. I am a licensed clinical mental health counselor. I'm a trauma practitioner, trainer, um, and practitioner. So that part's kind of important. Um, I think the major reason why I was accepted on the committee is because I bring a, a trauma lens to this work. I'm also Native and African American. Um, but the main thing I kind of focus on a professional standpoint is two things. It's supporting the mental health of professionals. I think it's awesome that we want to challenge educators and obviously I support that um, but I also support giving them the tools that they need to be successful instead of just challenging them we need to do a little bit of both so higher accountability and also higher support would be my dream um, and then the other thing is since I am a therapist and I've been in the community for five years there's a lot of community members that tell me a lot of things privately but they don't feel comfortable for various reasons saying things in settings like this so I become the voice of people that are not my voice. So sometimes you'll hear me say things and you're like, where is that coming from? It's coming from somebody in the community that doesn't feel comfortable saying whatever it is that I'm saying. Um, so a lot of times people will come to me and ask me to be their voice because for whatever reason they don't feel comfortable. So I try to honor that when possible. Um, yeah, so those are my things, that's me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Casey. And thank you, Franchon as well. I appreciate your um, comments and, and both of you sharing. Um, anyone else from Culture and Climate?
And I know we had um, at least one person who came to the call just a, a little late. Um, and what we're doing, um, we've had our new members to introduce themselves and we are um, providing time and space to talk about our work around our two large um, work groups. And, um, and then once you kind of share from, from that perspective and then just sharing your story and what um, has brought you to um, the EDI committee. So um, I'll open it up to everyone now who has not had a chance to speak. Okay. Um, if you if you something that you you think about later, it's kind of like when you have an interview and you walk out and you're like, oh my goodness, I should have said this. Um, if you didn't get a chance to say something, you think about it a little bit later. Just please, please, please in, interject. Um, what uh, Dr. Smith. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Who was it first? Yes. Um, I would. I think it's, it will be important if we share the mission statement that we created because I think we put so much hard work into that and and so far I think is representing as well. So I think it would be nice to have a time to not, it doesn't have to be today, but at some point like to go over the mission uh, statement that we created with our new members. Yeah, thank you for that, Lena. I, I think that would be um, extremely helpful. Um, and um, just um, touching base, um, Jennifer, is the website live now? Um, I believe so. Okay, because um, I'd love to um, spend some time and space um, maybe at our next meeting going through that. Um, and then also um, with that, there is a statement, uh, a video about racial equity that the um, committee has put together. And I think those would be some really important foundational pieces to, to share um, as well. Um, we meet twice a month. Um, part of the reason why we meet so often is because there is just so much to get done. Um, and we meet for n about 90 minutes because um, <laughs> I couldn't imagine um, us, you know, only meeting for an hour, but I also realized that, you know, that folks have stuff to do and, you know, and, and we live stream, but, you know, some, you, you, most of you are, are at home, I'm still at work, um, but, you know, there are things that have to be done in the home. So we do try to in promptly um, at, at 6.30, um, but um, we hope over the next, um, two meetings or so that we can share with you all those foundational pieces that will be critical um, to helping you to, to, to um, understand how we started and, and what has gotten us to the point where we are. So um, I say all that to say thank you, Lena, um, and I really appreciate that su suggestion. Um, and so, Cherry, if you don't mind adding that as an item, a, a, a action item, we'll formally build that into the um, agenda. Um, what I'd like to do now, if there are not any additional comments, is to create um, a little bit of time and space for our new member. Um, if you heard something that is of interest to you and you feel comfortable making a commitment, either working toward the um, academic um, committee or working more so in terms of corporate requirement, um, then you can um, definitely at that point. Um, and then also our academic committee, um, I know I alluded to this, but I don't think they spoke directly to that. They are preparing a presentation for the board and um, that's gonna be delivered either in February and or for February or March. And in that it's going to include recommendations. So um, in essence, our asks of the, of the board. Um, and so, you're interested in being a part of that work, then that would be the, the academic um, committee. So I'll stop talking because I have a tendency to talk a little bit too much um, and just give um, some time and space for other folks to either reflect um, or offer some comment. Can someone explain more about what the cultural group does? Okay, I'll try to do it better. <laughs> Everybody help me please, because uh, we know the, the approach that we have is uh, creating like different links and open ways of communication with the community and have representation from the community 
in different ways in the county and our school district so far. And I know there is another tax force that's the work group that does it like on, on different areas, but here for the county and the school system, we are working on uh, different uh, ways to get uh, representation of students. For example, as Casey said, the youth represented in different levels of the, for example, there is one proposal that we want to work on that is getting a students represent, uh, a student representative on the board meetings. And so we are researching on what capacity the students can participate, what will be the, the extent of their like responsibilities and all that. That is one thing. The other thing that we are working is uh, creating and checking what the different schools have in terms of a student representation bodies, like if they have a student a uh, student council team, or if they have uh, different groups by association, by representation, what kind of group is there in the in the different schools? And how can we help to be more diverse and how those groups are handled by a specific type of students that we wanna open that idea to diversity and get more representation on different areas that we might not think of, but if we, we need to go to, students and ask that kind of questions. So that's the other part that we want. The other part that we are thinking also is uh, the, as Tyler said before, working with the human resources and creating like system that help us retain a student, uh, teachers of color to come to work for our county. And not only uh, and recruit new teachers, so we are thinking we have had some meetings with the human resources. Um, we ask them where did they uh, recruit, what places do they go, and other possibilities that we know of, and then if they have had some success going to those places. And right now we know, for example, that one of the places that they go uh, is to UNCW. Well, there is not that much diversity in UNCW, so where else can we go? What else can we do to, to help uh, bring more diversity? And that also comes with a, a research on the type of uh, teachers that we have, like the composition of the uh, demographic of the teachers in the different schools. So how can we help uh, that these teachers represent the population that they are teaching as well? So those are like the four things that I can think of. Uh, guys, help me out if I forgot something. Rachel and I dropped into the chat the same spreadsheet that lists out like um, each of the goals for each of the committee. So if you're able to access that, that might give you a helpful visual. Okay, thank you so much. Um, and we also have the document that Rachel created as the work, the work uh, group uh, workflow proposal. That I think is also a good piece that can help us provide uh, some insight on what we are doing and the organizational system that we're trying to establish. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. And thank you, um, Rachel and Casey for dropping that link. And um, thank you, Lena, for um, that additional expl explanation. Um, I know that we've given a lot to you. It um, probably um, might be helpful um, for um, to process just a little bit. And I think it might even be helpful if um, I reached out individually and kind of talked through a little bit of this with you guys, um, just to make sure um, that we answered, you know, your questions and, and, and where you might want to fall out. Um, and then also just like um, Kirsten did, she dropped her email um, into the chat and said, you think, you know, I'm glad to work with anyone. If you think I'd be great for your group then reach out to me. So we'll try a different, quite a few different modalities to see if we can um, we can get to that. Um, and then also I'm getting a um, couple of um, messages in the, in the chat about where um, folks wanna be. So however that works for you, um, that will work wonderfully, okay? Thank you for that. Uh, what I'd like to do now is to give some time and space to um, Kirsten. Um, and for her to share with us um, a proposal. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Smith. So I'm gonna speak in really broad brushstrokes 
And I hope I give enough detail so that you can decide if this is interesting to you or not. And if it is interesting for this group to pick up, then I want to leave space for us to kind of co-create the details together. But in general, the idea that I, I um, communicated with Dr. Smith is it might be really interesting to have young people, high schoolers, tell us the story of what um, an equitable, diverse, and inclusive school community looks like. And so if we had an event where over maybe a period of six weeks, high school students could write an essay, write a fictional story, um, create a piece of music, a piece of photography, a piece of art to tell us the story or the vision of what a diverse, equitable and inclusive school community is, we could then host an event where we invite public leaders and community activists to come and see what the young people are telling us. How, what's their vision for diversity, equity and inclusion and how might we use our resources to support that? And so um, we, there are different ideas, you know, maybe it's just an event, maybe it's a contest, maybe students who submit something get a scholarship, you know, something. I'm, I'm happy to donate some money to uh, fund it if it's the event or scholarships for students. But I put that in front of you because if it sounds like something this committee could do um, or would be interested in doing, I'd be happy to work with people to flesh out the details for how it is we might put out a call to high school students, how we might manage um, the submissions, if it is some sort of an award um, based process, you know, who might be the review committee to determine the scholarships, things like that. But those are the details I haven't fleshed out because I think that's something we would do together if you like the idea. So welcome. Thoughts, comments? Okay. Well, uh, I, I have a question and I'm a, I, I didn't share this when I did my introduction, so I left a lot of stuff out, but I also work at Cape Fear Community College and the adult high school program. Mm -hmm. And so when we start looking at equity, inclusion and diversity, we wanna also understand what does inclusion mean and how are some students who are not included in this conversation, how are they being addressed? And so maybe we can dig a little bit deeper with it and try to get to some of the nuts and bolts of what's going on when we, or when I meet students later on. Oh yeah. So are you suggesting that maybe there would be some participation from the Cape Fear Community College students? Well, I'm not necessarily, what that too, however, prior to them meeting me, in this capacity, mm -hmm. understanding what is going on. Um, Dr. Smith knows the reason I wasn't at the first meeting. And so some of those um, traumatic events that we sometimes wanna throw under the bus or not avoid, or, you know, uh, for Sean, she, missed, she talked about when we are talking about mental health, a lot of these things are being impacted by our students. So when we look at equity and inclusion, we got to understand that it's a lot deeper than what we want to say on the surface. And so when we're looking at the trauma of virtual learning, the trauma of equity, the trauma of, I don't know what I'm going to learn or how I'm going to learn or if I'm going to make it out of high school. So what am I going to do? And so, I mean, I like the idea, but I think that it just needs to be maybe not necessarily a contest, but it actually needs to be a study to where what does equity and inclusion look like to you and what does it mean to be included to where you have your voice. And you know, like I think Casey was saying where we're fighting for student voice, like really actually talking to the students and understanding where they're coming from. So I completely, I do love the idea. I just wanna just hop in there real quick and support what Mr. Sidbury is saying that I think a, we need to think of a way to make sure it goes deeper than just let's have some sort of essay thing. And I know you listed other medium options. So the first thing I was going to say was I love that students should have different mediums because as someone who struggles with writing, um, I know that when somebody says like, like, for example, I could be getting all kinds of grants from my company that I don't get because I don't write. So it's like a problem. I leave 
plenty of money on the table every year because I don't spend time doing that. So I think it needs to be a multimedia option, but then also we need to figure out a way to make sure that we are encouraging students to go deeper and to and, and be mindful about the questions we're asking. Um, and of course, I'm a therapist, so like every time there's an opportunity, I'm always talking about like, well, let's have some therapeutic intent and let's talk about the trauma of because I think there's a really good opportunity to talk about like, what are the, what is the trauma of not having a school that is equitable? Mm -hmm. Because the reality is it is traumatic. Mm -hmm. And I think that it would be really wonderful to allow our students the space to speak about their experiences and speak about what they think the solutions are. Because I'm a firm believer those closest to the problem are closest to the solution. Um, so, I don't know if that makes sense, and I don't know if Mr. Barry agrees, but what I'm hearing is yes, but also let's go a little bit deeper than just a project, and let's make sure that we're eliciting the kind of information that we want for students and creating a safe place where they can really say how they feel. Because sometimes we as adults don't do a good job of that, mostly because we're just busy and we move too fast. Right. And Lena, you had your hand up? Yes, um, I was just want to piggyback on all the ideas that have been expressed because when, when I was listening to the, the project that I love, by the way, it's, it's an excellent idea to, to get to the students, but I want to bring a word of caution, kind of a we keep us kind of stuck on the ways to proceed because the system as we know them don't work for the students that we want to reach out to. So we don't want to get to the point that we're going to end up, you know, uh, like keeping the same stereotype. We send a contest and then the same people is going to participate with the same thing that been told by their parents on how to win. And it's not reaching the real purpose that we want that is giving a voice to everybody. So I think uh, we've been talking, how can we create representation in the school? Let's have elections. You know, elections are popularity contests. Okay, let's not do election. Let's ask the teachers. Teachers don't have time to go and then invite the students. And then we say, let's invite this student because he's African-American and he's very smart. Okay, this child doesn't know how to use his voice first. So now still doesn't know. How are we gonna teach that child to use the voice to be able to represent? And then, so it's been, we are being like spinning a wheel and trying to make different ways that, that this can be effective. So I love that idea to start like small with a, with a representation. So we kind of have a sneak peek of what we are dealing with, kind of doing like a pre-assessment kind of where we are at and then going into what kind of a study, what kind of focus groups we need to create in high school to address the conceptions or misconceptions that are addressing. So it's like a very long-term project if we wanna do it right. That's kind of my, what I was thinking. So, um, and I don't wanna, yes, go ahead, Casey. Well, I was just gonna provide context, especially for new members um, that one of the smaller task forces and I think the task forces long term are meant to sort of join the work of the employee work group and this committee. And one of those is about student voice. So um, two of the leaders from the equity work group have been working consistently and I've been able to participate as well with students. Um, and it's the leading equity center, right, Dr. Smith? Yes. Leading equity center, um, Dr. Sheldon Aikens specifically has been already kind of working with some of our high school students um, to really get at like, what is bias? What is privilege? What is uh, power? And, and, and really trying to learn, really have focus groups are basically what's happening in that context. Um, so I just want to provide that, con that context. And also I totally, totally reiterate what's already been said. I think about students at my school that would even have the capacity right now to do that. And they're the ones that are, you know, they're not the ones that we really need to hear from. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just sort of trying to think about the reality of what I see in a school every single day right now with the pandemic. Um, and the only other, only other thing I thought that was relevant to this is, you know, we've spoken about the strategic planning that's going to be uh, starting here soon. And uh, th I just think that, you know, however it fleshes out, if it does, it could be re very relevant to that effort. Mm -hmm. 
So um, if I can sum up just a little bit and definitely if I get it wrong, please push back again. But it's a you know, great space for that. Um, what I hear is a lot of support for the general idea, but there um, just needs to really be um, almost like an investigation about how we can bring this forth in a way that it's going to really add value mm -hmm. um, and, and, and benefit um, and be authentic. Because again, we don't want to do anything that's going to be superficial. And I think, Lena, you captured it really, really well. You know, a lot of times when we put out opportunities, it's the same children who know how to leverage um, the resources within the system. Um, and, and so we really want to dig deeper than that and really um, give voice um, and space and time to those students um, who, um, you know, for lack of a better term, are probably the, the most marginalized um, in the communities that, that we serve. So um, my suggestion would be um, if there are some folks who have an interest in this, um, maybe if you will connect with uh, Kirsten um, mm -hmm. and um, maybe sm form a, a, a small task force um, just really a around this. Um, and, you know, and Kirsten reached out to me and, and shared, and, you know, truly that sh she and her husband are willing to, to support this financially. So um, to do it in a high quality way so that it brings um, tremendous value add to our students in our community and the work. So. Um, if you've got an interest, if you don't mind um, reaching out to Kirsten, that would be great. And Kirsten, if it's okay, maybe you and I can kind of circle back in um, a week or two and just find out where we are um, to, to, to see how we land it. Because the other thing is, if this is not um, the right space for this, then, you know, maybe the, the alternative space would be the work group. Um, but, um, you know, we want to do everything we can to... to um, bring forth that student voice. And um, actually, Casey, to your point, which I know we wanted to put this on the agenda a little bit to talk about it more, uh, but just as a little bit of a side note, um, I'm meeting with uh, Mr. Jones and um, uh, Ms. Nobles, um, I think it's later this week, sometimes it all runs together. I know you guys have weeks like that with your calendars um, to talk about how we can establish um, equity groups um, or in, with students in all of our schools, um, because you know that's initially that that's where we want the work to go. So we're going to be brainstorming around um, how to expand that, and then I'm sure that once we have um, had that initial conversation, then we'll circle back, um, or they will circle back and and loop you in because you've been a part of that work um, as as well. So um, thank you, um, Kirsten, for bringing this to the group. Um, and for offering this. And thank you guys for all of your comments and your feedback, it's extremely valuable. Um, I really appreciate it. And I'm excited about the potential around this. So thank you. Um, I think the next item on the agenda, and I tried to give um, um, information about this ahead of time. Um, if you are familiar with the Community Relations Advisory Committee letter that was sent to Wilmington City Council, New Hanover County Board of Commissioners, um, and New Hanover County Board of Education. If you would put a one in the chat, um, if you're not familiar with that letter, you haven't had a chance to read it, if you'll put a two in the chat. So everybody's got to put something in the chat, <laughs> either one or two. Um, so what I'll say is in an email, not I think last week that I sent to you, I did link that in. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to read it, if you would, there's quite a bit of information there. Um, but what I'll do is just offer a little bit of a summary. And I think because there's so many folks who haven't read the letter, we're probably not going to um, be able to go as in depth um, in the conversation is probably um, I would have liked us to um, um, have um, gone, um, but I do want to bring some 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 um, attention to this and some voice to this. And so the um, community, um, let me ask another secondary question. Um, are any of you familiar with the presentation that um, Mr. Scott Wisnett has been sharing um, uh, across the, the district? I don't know if it's been outside the district, but I know within the district, um, recently. So if you are familiar with that, if you'll put a one in its chat, if you're not, if you'll put a two. 
That'll help with the contact. Okay, and so it's a little mixed there. And so I'll give you a little background there. So there is a gentleman, um, um, Scott Wisnett. Um, he is associated with the hospital. I apologize for not knowing his exact title, but I believe he also sits on this community relations advisory committee. And so they have pulled together um, some pretty compelling data. Um, they're using a source for the data that is School Digger. Um, um, probably, um, Kirsten, from your perspective, not you know, um, like research-based or, or vetted that way, um, but it's a data set. And, and what I would say is, even if it's not as reliable as maybe data sets that we would find in, in our colleges and universities, the, the data that's presented trends in the, in the direction that, you know, if there were the different data set used, it would still trend in that same direction. So, you know, so I don't think there's a, the point is to argue um, with with what is being offered as outcomes. Um, but out of that work, they have offered um, several recommendations. Um, one is that all county legislative bodies meet in open session within the next 90 days to hear and respond to the presentation entitled New Hanover County Schools, the Impact of Neighborhood Schools. And that's the foundational piece. And so essentially what is being offered is that when the school district redistricted, um, I guess it's been about 10 years ago um, to neighborhood schools. And that was a, the platform of the board members who were running at the time, many of them. Um, it ended up having um, a hugely negative impact on um, specifically black and brown children because they were racially segregated to very specific schools with, within our district. And there were schools who had been performing at or above average that significantly when the demographics change within the schools, um, they, the, the performance of those schools significantly declined. And so that's what the, the, the premise is there. Um, so the second recommendation is school board develop a plan before the end of the school year to develop capacity for district-wide pre -A education. Um, the goal should be universal pre-K um, within two years. Um, next recommendation, and I don't wanna, I hate that I'm reading all of these to you, so I won't read all of them, just to give you a little bit of the jest. Um, the school district um, develop a plan to start immediately to ensure diversity in the instructional staff of every school. Progress reports should be incorporated into your periodic staffing report. To the school board, we request a baseline report of cultural diversity then 20% improvement by June 2022. Um, and so it really goes along those um, same types of um, recommendations. Um, another one is that the school board developed a plan to incentivize teachers to stay or transfer to schools with the greatest number of free and reduced lunch and minority students um, over for the 2023 school year should be less than 15% at any school. Um, and again, there are a few others. And so um, for those of you who are familiar with the report, I'd love to give you some time and space um, to talk about your thoughts related to this. Um, I can tell you that the school system is very aware of this report. Um, there are conversations with, um, I, I know the county, I don't know if the city um, in regards to um, a response. Um, but I'm very interested in your thoughts. For those of you who aren't as familiar with this, um, definitely you can surely share your opinion based on what I've shared with you today. But if you don't mind going back to that email that I've sent to you um, and taking a look at it, and then if you wanna send me your thoughts or comments electronically, then we can um, capture those as well. So again, I do tend to talk quite a bit. I'm gonna stop and give you guys time and space. I mean, my initial thoughts on this are, you know, Rachel expressed this concern about a year ago with the most recent redistricting that this was going to just continue moving in, in a negative direction um, unless, unless something is done. It's, this is a, a very big challenge due to just, 
you know, I mean, it stems from what redlining, however many years ago, and it's a very big problem to fix. It doesn't mean we shouldn't try to fix it, but our recommendations to fix it are going to be, in, in my opinion, very long lead because we are only seeing this information after the redistricting that occurred eight years ago. Right. And so, you know, kind of tweaking those dials, um, it, it's, it's going to take a very tight relationship with our community and, um, and also just people both in and outside of the school system. I, I think, I think that there can be ways to fix it, but some of it is going to have to be done with the, the board's consent and, and the board, like having a unified direction. Um, perhaps we have that. I don't, I don't know everybody well enough, uh, but, but it's going to be a, a, a big ask to fix. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and, and I definitely appreciate your reference to the community um, because I think even greater than the board's commitment, I think you've got to have the community's commitment because what you're talking about are people's children. Mm -hmm. So it means that your child who attends school A no longer attends school A, but attends school D. Um, and your willingness to keep them enrolled in the public schools as opposed to um, removing them and starting your own charter school, mm -hmm. um, because that's what we saw with the um, desegregation of schools um, yeah. before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, that's when you, a lot of these, um, you know, foundational academies and places like that, they weren't present until we went through resegregation of schools. And so are we gonna see, um, you know, a greater influx of that? And, and now we've got charter schools where actually the state pays for um, these schools because I know a lot of my colleagues um, in Durham, and I'm sure Kirsten, you can speak to this, with a decline in the student population, there was just this, um, explosion of charter schools as a result of folks, you know, not wanting to um, see these changes. And so I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned the community because I think, again, the greater community commitment has to come from the community. Yeah, and, and what makes me anxious about it is that during the last, during the last redistricting, which was very recent, and we had the ability to do something about it, we got a lot of resistance. And so I think that, you know, we're gonna have to be a little maybe more visible and make, make data like this more visible um, so that people can really buy into, like all the research says that diversity of every kind helps everybody and, and you know, in order to like get people to truly understand that we have to, we have to, you know, show how that works and, you know, kind of continue that, that partnership. Well, I think um, that the task force or the advisory community relations advisory committee laid out an incredibly sound and research informed set of recommendations. So they're very legitimate, but exactly what, what was just said, I mean, it is a real commitment. But there is not a district, or there are very few districts in the United States that aren't grappling with the same issues. We have hundreds of years of law and policy and practice that have led us to this moment in time. And yet it is our moment in time. It is exactly our moment in time. And we have to ask ourselves morally and ethically, are we gonna act on it? And so um, the, I'd like to act on it. I'd like to support action. And I do think that's right, creating coalitions of the willing in the community who will stand shoulder to shoulder with us to move the needle forward, um, creating also um, spaces where diverse opinions can exist. Um, I work closely with African-American colleagues who are washing their hands of integration plans because they have seen the public school system failed their children under integration plans repeatedly. And so making space for that so that can be heard as well. My suggestion would be um, decide who, who the primary authority or uh, decision-making body is going to be. If it's the board plus the administration, uh, the administrative leadership for the district, go into a retreat. I mean, literally go into a retreat for two days 
where you can break down the issues. And if you come out of that retreat saying, we're committed to this, it's a long game, just as the speaker before me said, this is not something that is solved within a year. Um, but there are things that we can accomplish in 12 months, but it's a long game and we're committed to it. I personally will stand with you and walk with you on the journey. And I bet a whole bunch of other people will too. I think that this is not a necessarily a school board issue. This is a community issue. So the community that's having the suggestions, even, I mean, as I told them, because I went to their meeting and I presented because, um, you know, I was presented with the information earlier and then before, prior to Dr. Smith sending it out. And I looked at it, it was from 2018 when DC Virgo was not, we were last part of New Hanover County in 2018, but we're in the presentation. And so just like I told the community relations committee is gentrification, opportunity and cost and economics is what's impacting the district. Mm. That's what's impacting schools. Um, I cannot afford to buy a house in the city that I love because of you have $750,000 townhomes going along the river. Mm -hmm. um, and it's ridiculous. So in the historic district that was not the historic district or the antique district or the arts district or the <laughs> historic downtown district or whatever it was when I was growing up, where it was a bunch of diversity in downtown Wilmington, it no longer exists. So we can put all the recommendations to the city of Wilmington, or I mean, to the New Hanover County School Board, but it's not gonna change. The downtown area, I stayed on Fifth Street. Gregory was right there, it's a magnet school. How my son was supposed to go to Snipes, that's where he was district to go. I worked at Williston. And so it is a bit, it's a lot bigger than something the school board can handle until people in the community have resources. Wilmington has a 25% poverty rate. The black community has a 41% poverty rate. And so that's something that has to be considered. The biggest employers, and so this is something I said to Mr. Wesley, how many people are you employing? Yes, I believe in community partners. I believe in diverse community workers, but this is bigger than redistricting. This is way bigger. Now you cannot just change the line and think that something is gonna happen because it's not. Uh, well, Mr. Perry, can I just say please? That's all. I'm yeah, done. thank you, thank you. Well, um, I think you might've summed it up for, <laughs> I, know, I know you summed it up for me. I, I, I think you might've summed it up for, um, for, for others on, on, on the call. Um, but thank you for that, thank you. Um, and then also, um, Kirsten, thank you for your insights as, as well. Um, I knew that when I um, shared the topic, we would not have enough time to go um, as deeply as we would like to. Um, our meeting, our next meeting is um, January the 4th, I believe. I know I wrote it, yeah, January the 4th. Um, and that meeting was supposed to be dedicated to our work group work. Um, but what I'd love for us to do is maybe be able to build out another agenda and have this be a continued conversation once everyone has had the chance to take a look at the document. And then also, um, Casey, to add your um, item right behind that as well, so that we can spend some more time with um, our student voice. Um, also at that time we'll have, um, very likely we will have our new um, committee members um, from our school board. So it may be Ms. Adams, we know it won't be Ms. Esep. Um, Ms. Esep also has a presentation that maybe we'll invite her as a community member to come back and share with us that she didn't get to share it during her time um, on the board. Um, and so, and then we would make our second meeting, which I think is on the 27th of, um, um, 27th of January, our, our um, work group meeting. Um, so if that, that works. Again, there's a reason why we meet twice a month because there is just so much to, to get done. So it is 629. Um, I cannot thank you enough um, for all that you have given to this, um, the time that you, that you have given personally, um, and I am so appreciative of, of all of you. Again, my, my thank you to Franchon for just incredible time last time, Jennifer for the presentation and to Ms. Cisa for her um, commitment to this work. Um, and I look 
all forward to seeing all of you in the new year, if not before. And I hope everyone has um, a wonderful break. <laughs> Hard to believe today is December the 7th. Um, and so if there's anything that I can do to be of service, please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out. And so thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. You too. Thank you for everything, Dr. Smith. You are more than.